if you have a mortgage or you've been looking to buy a property, you may or may not have heard of a revolving credit facility and you may or may not understand exactly what it is. In today's video, I'm gonna be exploring what a revolving credit facility is, how it works, who it is suitable for, the best ways to utilize it, explaining the differences between an offset facility and also the revolving credit facility, and finishing off with a pros and cons list. I'm hoping by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of revolving credit. As always, feel free to skip around the timestamps to save time. Let's get into it. First up, let's look at what is a revolving credit facility and how does it work? Basically, it's a line of credit with a set limit that is available to the borrower to repay and redraw as many times as they like. A credit limit means this is the maximum amount that the bank is allowing the borrower to have access to. So how exactly does it work? I like to think of it as like a big overdraft or a big credit card where you have access to the money when you need it and you can repay it whenever you like. The bank calculates the interest daily based on the balance owing and then this is charged at the end of each month. Currently, most of the main banks in New Zealand are offering a revolving credit facility and it can be mixed with other mortgage products such as fixed loans. If you are looking to incorporate it into your mortgage structure, then do let your bank or your mortgage advisor know at your initial mortgage application stage so that they can factor it in as it does need to be assessed and approved. So what is the best way to utilize a revolving credit facility? A good way to do this is to set it up as if it is an everyday account where you have all your income and all your expenses going out of the one account. Your account balance will go up and down as money is paid in and also spent. You'll pay interest on the balance outstanding, which for most people will change daily as the transactions occur. So for example, let's take John and Sally. They've got a revolving credit set up with a $100,000 limit and it's on the floating rate of 8.50% at the moment. At the start of the month, the full $100,000 is outstanding due to purchasing two new cars and also completing a few minor home renovations. At the end of the month, both John and Sally receive their wages for the month, which reduces their balance owing down to $85,000. They then decide to take $5,000 out again and pay off an outstanding credit card balance. So now their balance owing is $90,000. Every day, the bank calculates the interest based on the balance owing, and then at the end of the month, this is charged. Revolving credit mortgages work best when the balance owing is kept as low as possible. This saves on interest costs and the costs of the mortgage overall. Unlike normal mortgages, revolving credit mortgages do not have any set repayments on the set dates. Instead, it's up to the borrower to make repayments when they want to do so. So until that happens, interest keeps getting added to the total balance outstanding. Some of the banks in New Zealand offer revolving credits with a credit limit that steadily decreases over time. The purpose of this is to help you repay your mortgage in full by limiting the amount that you can reborrow against your property. So now let's look at who might need a revolving credit and for what sort of reasons. Revolving credit mortgage interest rates are generally, in most cases, a bit lower than personal finance loans or car loans. This means anyone that wants to borrow to buy a high ticket item can tap into the equity and borrow against their house. The money can be used for anything. Investors sometimes like to utilize revolving credit mortgages to use as a deposit for their next investment purchase. Those who can budget well and manage their money effectively will benefit the most from a revolving credit mortgage. However, if you do take years to pay the balance owing down, then the interest costs can be much higher than short-term finance. So now let's look at a few fun facts about revolving credit mortgages. The first fun fact is that it is on a floating rate. So this means it is subject to change at any time. Currently in New Zealand in 2023, the interest rates for floating rates are over 8%. Another fun fact is that you can convert your revolving credit balance owing over to a fixed mortgage at any time. This can be a good option if the floating rate starts to climb and fixed rates are lower. It can make the balance easier to repay if it's fixed on a lower rate. While you can fix it at any time, you will need to reapply if you'd like to have revolving credit facility again or increase your limit again. This is because it requires a full affordability assessment to be completed. Another fun fact is that you do need to have at least 20% equity in your property to tap into it. So now let's look at what is the difference between an offset mortgage and a revolving credit facility. Offset mortgages and revolving credit mortgages are similar, but there are succinct differences. An offset mortgage relies on having cash to offset the mortgage balance. You won't earn any interest on the cash, but your interest costs will be lower. 
The two key differences are that the revolving credit combines all of your finances into one account, whereas an offset mortgage lets you keep your cash in multiple bank accounts. A revolving credit mortgage lets you redraw up to the limit as many times as you like. Now this is different to an offset mortgage which doesn't allow spending, but the money is available should you need it. If you'd like more information about how offset mortgages work, then I've got a great video which I'll link down in the description box for you to check out. So now let's look at the pros, the cons and the bottom line of revolving credit mortgages. First up, let's look at the pros. Number one, you have easy access to the funds when you need them. You don't have to apply for a loan or take out a credit card. Number two, you may save interest costs on car loans, personal loans, and credit cards. The interest rate is usually lower, and if you pay your balance down regularly, you can really save on interest. Number three, you can reduce your interest charges by depositing your salary or wages into your revolving credit account. This reduces your balance down, and as we know, interest is calculated daily, so this can save you on interest costs. Number four, is that it's flexible. You don't receive your funds as a lump sum or have excessive payments. The revolving credit facility is a flexible way to get your hands on the funds that you need. Okay, now let's look at the cons. Number one, it's easy to overspend if you aren't careful. You must keep careful track of your spending and your income so that you can pay your balance down and reduce your interest costs. Number two, it's easy to pay more interest than you may anticipate. Let's say for example you buy a car with your funds available in the revolving credit facility, but you don't make regular repayments like you would if you had a car loan, then the interest that you pay is gonna be much higher than it would be if you had taken out a car loan instead. Number three is that it's like an always available ATM. You have the funds available and you can access them with your debit card or with checks. If you aren't careful, you could get in over your head very quickly. While the money may be available to you, it's not actually yours. The money is essentially the bank's and they will charge interest to you on what they lend to you. The bottom line is that a revolving credit won't be for everyone, but it does have key benefits. If you're really good at budgeting, then you'll benefit from such financing. You may save money on interest and you'll always have access to liquid funds should you need them. If you will use a revolving credit to go on shopping sprees and sporadic spending, then it may not be the right option for you. While it feels like it offers the freedom to spend, that is not the case. Every dollar spent is a dollar that you need to repay plus interest. If you aren't sure if a revolving credit mortgage is right for you, then have a chat with your bank or your mortgage advisor for advice. If you have any questions about revolving credit mortgages, feel free to get in touch or leave me a comment down below. If you like this video and learn something new, don't forget to like and subscribe as I post a new video every week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.